a little pop up up there it is it just popped up on our screen that, that we are streaming mm -hmm. so let me find the video hadn't popped up on my facebook yet it'll pop up there in a minute you tell me if you see it it says meeting is now live live on facebook pop up there, in a there it is so let me share it and just say join us for starting a small business with Kashana, Shalisha, and Chris. Do you happen to know <clears throat> Kristen Funderburg or Shalisha Morgan? I do not, not by name. Okay, well, you'll meet them in a minute. Okay, awesome. We are live. Good morning, everybody. I'm Alan Younger, and I'm the director of the Small Business Center. And I am so happy that one of the things that I, it's such a chore, I have to do every day is deal with small business owners. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I really enjoy it, though. And look, I didn't realize, Kashana, that we color coordinated. I wore black <laughs> and white, and you wore black and white. So we look like we're supposed to be together. <laughs> so every week this year in 2021, we have featured some small business owners. And a lot of times the people who are hanging out with us, they had never heard of. Them. Mm. And so there's a lot of small business folks in town. Yes. You know, I, I get to hang out throughout Forsyth and Stokes counties and I, I haven't met them all. I've been doing my job for more than eight years and there's more and more of them. Not because some of them have existed and I just haven't gotten around to meeting them. Some of them, they just keep popping up. Because did you know that years ago, Winston-Salem won an award. We're ranked number one. Let me get this right. Yes. Look at my notes. We are ranked number one in the country. Mm. For here it is. Winston-Salem is tied for first in the highest average growth in the number of small businesses. Wow. And yours is one of those because <laughs> you started this last year. So <laughs> we're tied with Austin, Texas. Beautiful place. Wow. But compared to every other city in the country, mm -hmm. we have the, get this right, the highest average growth in the number of small businesses. So one of those small businesses is, is owned by Krishana Heinz Gaither. Yes. And the business is called Heinz Gaither Consulting. Yes. So for those of you who have not met Krishana, mm -hmm. you didn't happen to hear her commencement speech a couple of weeks ago on behalf of Foresight Tech, or you didn't know her because this isn't the first business that she owned and operated, right? Mm -hmm. She's gonna tell you a little bit about it. So Kashana, excuse me, let me get that right. Dr. <laughs> Heinz Gaither, because you know, I'm you know, i just gonna respect that because you know, there's this thing going around, right? <laughs> so I'm not gonna violate you know, what you've earned. You've earned the right to be called Dr. <laughs> Kashana Heinz Gaither. Tell us a little bit about Heinz Gaither Consulting. Excellent. Well, it's so nice to be with you this morning. I'm a little raspy because of allergies, so excuse me. <laughs> We're all in the same boat, so it's oh. all good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I was out yesterday for Memorial Day, um, and uh, I think it just kind of hit me, these allergies. So um, thank you for having me, Heinz Gaither Consulting. So um, I, professionally, I work as um, an, an Associate Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, currently at Guilford College, but my last position was at Salem College uh, in the same role there. And so I was doing this work professionally for a really long time, about 15 years, um, and I was working mainly in the sector of education. So I was a very successful um, educator. I taught Spanish. Um, I also speak French. And um, most of our profession is about 80% white, but our population of students is exactly reversed, mostly students of color in, in most of our school systems. And so I was speaking to a lot of pre pre predominantly white educators um, who were wanting um, to have those best practices for how to have an inclusive classroom. So I started working with educators about 15 years ago, teaching them strategies and techniques for educating all children but at the same time being sensitive to the needs of diverse learners. And I began to be invited across the country to do that work. Soon I realized that my skills were transferable. 
and that I didn't have to only work in the sector of education, but I could also do this work in the field of business and religious institutions and nonprofit organizations and foundations. And so I began to work with those organizations as well. Um, I was doing it just kind of on the side, uh, just trying to really help people, which is what we do, and giving back um, as many people have poured into my life. About a year ago, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, I decided that I could take this to another level if I really got the business established. And so a little over a year ago, I actually incorporated and started my LLC for Heinz Gaither Consulting. I had no way of knowing at the time. And I also started a blog uh, in January of 2020. And then in May of 2020, I also incorporated Heinz Gaither Consulting. All the timing. The, numbers, the, the world time. changed in May last year, didn't the it? The world <clears throat> You're absolutely right. And so I had people reaching out to me saying, we have a pandemic. We have students at home. How do we make sure that we're being inclusive online when we're trying to reach these children? And so I started having that particular petition put out to me. And then we had the tragedies of last year when George Floyd was murdered, followed by Breonna Taylor and so many others. And so in the education fear, sphere, people were trying to figure out how do I build inclusion when we're remote, when we're online. In the world, in businesses, and so many different entities, people were trying to understand how do we make sense of the senseless acts that have just happened and how does that impact our relationships in the workplace? And so it happened that I was well positioned. I had been doing this work for 15 years and I had established my business. I had received help from the Forsyth Tech Small Business Center in terms of taking grant writing classes and learning how to really understand the business aspect of what I, I had the passion, I had the knowledge base, but it was very helpful to me to take the classes that were free at the Small Business Center and learn more about the business aspect. So quickly, within about four to five months, we were at capacity. Our consulting company helping these organizations to reach their diversity, equity, and inclusion goals, um, we were inundated with requests. And so I had to hire about 12 people within my first year. I had to hire 12 consultants to help me. I was receiving calls from small companies as well as well-known institutions in Silicon Valley, Princeton University, BET. Um, I was receiving large acts from companies like that, but Sounds also- like you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, but also homegrown businesses and small businesses right here in our own community. So it was powerful to be able to offer employment to some people who have been furloughed from their jobs and also to be able to support businesses in my own community as well as larger institutions as well. Outstanding. Thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed by you. I've known you for years. We've worked together on, on a few right. other things too. And I'm really excited about this. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the things that I was happy to send you an email about in about maybe the third week of April was yes. that uh, Heinz Gaither Consulting was recognized as the Community Business of the Month yes. for May. It's hard yeah. to believe that we're saying May in past tense now, but right. here it is and we're in June. But uh, one of the reasons why the Small Business Center partnered with five other organizations yes. uh, three years ago was to promote these small businesses that are in our community who are doing some really good things. <clears throat> and a lot of people just don't know about them. Yes. So I'm glad that you're on here today so we can let people know here's what Heinz Gate for Consulting is all about. Yes. But just know that in addition to your hard work, I want every small business owner to know that there are organizations like the Small Business Center that exist to provide resources to help you be successful, but also we wanna brag about you. We want other people to know about you. We want them to use your services. We want them to refer other people to you because they might not need your services, but they can say, you know, I know somebody who does. Right. And, and, and we've been working hard to identify great businesses like yours and and those businesses, some of them are a year old like yours is. Some of the, and so, so I didn't realize at the time that it was 
the one year anniversary when you were right. recognized of the small That's business. Exactly right. We need we're going to continue to promote that some more about the way. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I'm not at liberty to say today who the small business of the month is for June, but I know who it is, and I'm really excited about it. And mm -hmm. and that will be announced later this week. So everybody stay tuned. But anyway, one of the things that I, I tend to ask people is about well two two things, and you could incorporate these into one response, or we can I can ask you later. But <clears throat> one is, are there any particular resources that are helpful to you? I'm glad you mentioned the Small Business Center, but in addition to the Small Business Center, are there are there particular resources that you would suggest that other small business owners who are watching this look into? And then the other is. Are there any particular challenges that you've overcome mm -hmm. that you want to say to everybody else, either expect to, to face this challenge or do like I do like I wish I did and learn a little bit more so that you don't have to face this challenge? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So some of the resources that have been very helpful to me is a small business center. Their services are very accessible. Um, financially, they're accessible and also the breadth of information. And like you said, my husband and I, we have other businesses as well. So we've been using the Small Business Center for a very long time to learn about marketing. We've learned about marketing. We've learned about social media. I think as small businesses, we don't do as well with promoting ourselves. And I have found that when we put our information out there and let people know what we have to offer and the quality of excellence in which we operate, they will come. So we build it, they will come. And so I learned a lot from the Small Business Center about marketing. We took classes years ago um, about marketing. And of course, things have even evolved more now. But that has been very helpful to me. The Chambers of Commerce have been very helpful. And so that is the, um, you know, in Forsyth County or Winston-Salem Chamber. And I live in Kernersville and also the Kernersville Chamber. Um, I'm meeting on Thursday with Chris, uh, with Chris Comer, which some of you I'm sure know. She has mentioned you to me already, Alan. But did, did, was she was she talking trash or did? Oh no! She, I yeah. think she likes me. <laughs> she <laughs> loves you, loves you. Go so back a long way. She, they're doing oh, great work. There. That's what she said. And let and me just quickly say, hey, Chris. Oh, Kristen. hi, Kristen. <laughs> you just joined us. Yes. But, hello, Kristen. But she might. It looked like she's frozen, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But you go ahead and keep talking. Yeah. Yeah, so that has been really helpful. Um, and, you know, there are so many people who are willing to extend themselves to you. So just like you and Nail, um, I went to a conference a couple of weeks ago, Women in Business Conference that was put on by the Kernersville Chamber of Commerce. It was excellent. And so there, are, and it was very accessible. I mean, it, it was very affordable and I made so many wonderful connections. I walked out of there with three potential contracts just from going to that particular luncheon. And so there are so many opportunities here in our city. Um, kind of nationally, I really follow the work of Dr. Lynn Richardson. And she uh, is just in, you know, she's been on Steve Harvey's show and does a lot of work with helping small businesses. And so in her work as well, she has a lot of YouTube videos. Um, and I, I bought her books, I do her webinars. So Dr. Lynn Richardson is a national force that has really been helpful to me as well. Great. A lot of people, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Chamber of Commerce, whether you're in Kernersville or in Winston-Salem or Louisville, Clemens mm -hmm. or, or in, in King, there are some wonderful chambers of, oh, in the Black Chamber of Commerce, there are some wonderful chambers of commerce that are right here that have all kinds of resources and their desire is to help small businesses to be successful. That's exactly right. So Kristen, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay, but we're certainly glad to see you. And Shalisha, Shalisha's audio is connecting, but before we, there we go. Hey, Shalisha, I see your audio just connected. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. This is Krishana. Hello. Want, want to make sure y'all meet each other. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and so one of the things that I was just talking about <clears throat> was the Community Business of the Month. There are six organizations that come together every month to recognize some great small businesses that are here in Forsyth County doing some great things. And I'm so privileged that I'm hanging out with three of the past winners right now. I can't even remember what month it was, Kristen, when you won. It was last year or the year before. I, I, I lose track. I'm, I'm glad to lose track. Same with you, Shalisha. I can't remember when Geek and Heels won it. Was it, was it last year 
or was Last it year and the year prior twice yes twice okay yeah see, see, I, I like to hang out with award winners that's what i do i i, I find <laughs> people who are special and i say hey my name is alan and i'm trying to learn from you <laughs> so so Kristen. yes let's talk there are people on here, believe it or not, there are people on here who have never heard of Lizzie's all natural product. Mm. And I'm going to ask the same question to you, Shalisha. There are people who've never heard of Geek and Heels. Now that they've at least heard the name, <clears throat> please tell them a little bit more about it so that they can either come your way or send somebody your way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Kristen Elizabeth and I create all natural products for um, sensitive skin, people with eczema, and I mean, honestly, we serve anybody with skin, but I really enjoy um, just helping people with um, skin conditions such as eczema, hyperpigmentation, and things like that. I'm almost a licensed esthetician. Um, I have a store downtown Winston-Salem, and that's where we, you know, sell and create all of our products. Uh, we're mostly e-commerce. Um, that's where we make most of our sales. However, we are, you know, accessible here locally in the city as well. I think at one point, <clears throat> it was 70% of your business was e-commerce, maybe a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's still the case. <clears throat> yeah, it really is. It's actually, um, since the pandemic, it's gone up. Um, you know, we're trying to increase foot traffic, but we don't have a storefront exactly. You have to, you know, come inside our building to access us. So it's a little different. However, we do have customers that shop online or are able to check check out and choose the pickup option. So that draws people to the store as well. Cause they'll, you know, sometimes bring a friend or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what, that's what we are. We're mostly e-commerce. <laughs> great, great. Shalisha, you work really hard in social media to make sure people have heard of Geek and Heels, but just in case there's a <laughs> two or three people who are watching this either live or on video that haven't heard of the Geek and Heels, let's tell them a little bit about it. Well, Geek and Nails was founded in 2013. I am your own personal concierge service repair. So basically, I service cell phones, computers, anything with a logic word in it, Geek and Heels can fix. Um, what's unique about my business is I'm in a male-dominated field. Of course, I'm not... <laughs> a man. I'm not a white man. You're not. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a woman of color. Um, some people deem me as classy. So when people come to me, they don't expect to see a black woman in heels dressed very well, fixing on computers, iPads, um, TVs. Um, and during the pandemic, first I was scared because I thought, you know, my business was going to tank. But fortunately for me, it took you know, it, it rose. I made the most money. Um, I was able to pivot, pivot my business going from, you know, in-store to going back to mobile. That's how I started before I got my, my, my first brick and mortar. So all doing last year, I was traveling from, my day was starting in Winston. Some days I'd end my evening in Raleigh or in Charlotte. So I was traveling all over uh, North Carolina and South Carolina as well, servicing um, computers, you know, trying to help seniors really learn the technology of Zoom and so they can be in contact with their family. Um, so I, I truly enjoy what I do. I enjoy being based out of Haynes Mall and I'm looking forward to expanding as well. Outstanding, thank you. And <clears throat> you know, I picked up on a theme while you all were talking. So during the pandemic, unfortunately, a lot of businesses failed. Mm -hmm. And those that didn't fail, they did suffer in a lot of ways. So during the pandemic, Krishana started a new business. Shalisha, your business grew. You pivoted so that it could grow. People weren't coming to the mall like they used to, but you figured out how to continue the business growth. And same with you, Krista. Your business, at least the, especially the e-commerce part of your business, just skyrocketed. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So just let the record show. Here's my next question for, 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 for both of you ladies. I, I asked... Krishana, right before you joined us, what are some of the resources, not just during the pandemic, but before the pandemic and long after the pandemic, what are some of the resources that you want other people to know about that have helped you and will continue to help you to be successful? Networking is key. 
Um, yeah. I failed to mention, I'm not from North Carolina. I'm originally from Kansas City, Kansas. I moved here in 2015 through, you know, my employer. I left my employer in 2018, um, but in 2017, I decided to rebrand Geek and Heels. And I didn't know anyone here. I knew no one. I started my, my Instagram page and my Facebook page again. I looked online and I saw um, Chamber of Commerce. I saw the, um, the Black Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Center, and then a short time after that Venture Cafe. So I made it a point to go by myself and visit these places. So fast forward to pandemic. People may not have been my clients, but they knew of Geek and Heels because I was able to network and do business with small business uh, with, you know, being mentored for my taxes and how to grow your business and such, or seeing me at Venture Cafe or hearing about me through the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce. So having those networking connections from two years ago helped me last year. You never know when you meet someone when they'll need you. They might not need you in that moment, but fast forward to two years, even last week I had a client say, hey, I met you at Venture Cafe and Venture Cafe has been gone for a year now. So for this person to still remember me and bring their business to me, you know, was mon monumental. And then just growing those business relationships with fellow entrepreneurs too, because you can refer people the same way that they refer you as well. Outstanding. Were you going to add something to that, Crystal? I was like for me during the pandemic, social media was key. I mean, social media already plays a huge part in my business, but you know, during the pandemic, there were so many people just with extra idle time. So, you know, I got to like be in their face every single day. And it's like, I gained so many followers and um, loyal customers, returning customers, just because like they just decided to you know, give the products a try during the pandemic and fell in love. So I definitely say social media and I took advantage of some grants that were out there during the pandemic as well. I mean, people were giving money away left and right. Like, so I, I applied to <laughs> anything that I could, you know, and that was, that definitely helped hmm. um, pay some bills. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so I'm sorry. So this is my first major conversation of the day. That's why I keep clearing my throat. So I apologize. <laughs> um, in a, so other than the pandemic, which gr brought on its own set of challenges, for all three of you, I'd love for you to speak to some of the challenges that we face as business owners, whether they're unique to our industry or us being, uh, y'all being women <laughs> or us being Black or whatever it is. What are some of the challenges that, you faced that you know other people who are watching this with us are either experiencing it or they might experience it moving forward. Capital, access to capital. I think the best thing for all three of us as women of color was the pandemic and actually being able to get that access to capital. Because before we were only getting breadcrumbs. 500 here, 1,000, maybe 4,000. That's bread comes in comparison to our, you know, our white, white business owner counterparts who can just go into a bank with a business plan and say, hey, I'm thinking about opening this bike shop. I've never ran one before, but I can be successful. And the bank giving them $50,000. Whereas we as women and, and, you know, Black men as well who, who open businesses, make the mark, net a hundred thousand, go to a bank and say, Hey, I've been doing this for such, such and such a long time. Can I have capital to grow my business? And the bank saying, mm, no, we don't want to take a risk. So for me, the best thing to happen was a pandemic to being able to get access to the EIDL, to the PPP, to grow and sustain my business. Cause I, I was scared. You know, I have no family here and I have two children to feed. So I, I kind of panicked. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do when the mall closed, but Thankfully, I was able to pivot my business. So access to capital funding has been, you know, you know, Christy was saying it, you know, being able to get those funds so we can pay our bills and breathe and actually grow our business. So that's been a blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I can think of one unique, like, um, problem that I've come across, you know, this. I mean, I wouldn't say it's unique to my industry, but anybody that's e-commerce, I mean, shipping, shipping was like a disaster last year. It's gotten so much better, um, but, you know, my business depends on the USPS and the UPS, like, and without them, I mean, 
e-commerce wouldn't even be a thing. So, I mean, shipping was terrible. I know y'all heard the stories of them like throwing away boxes and things being delayed. I mean, there were so many times when customers would say, hey, this order still hasn't came. It's been like weeks and I'm, you know, um, having to resend the order. And then weeks later, the other order will magically arrive at their doorstep. And we've, you know, ended up spending twice as much for that customer just because we had to replace that order. And then they, you know, the contents were either damaged or, yeah, so we don't, <laughs> want, to, was no, we don't want to relive it, but we just relived it, right? That was, that was crazy. That was crazy. Is there something you were going to add, Krishana? Yes, I would say, you know, there's a word <laughs> I really love that is uh, generativity, generativity. And that is the concept of- um, I need to write that down. <laughs> generativity. Um, and that is the concept of pretty much, um, simply put, uh, reinventing yourself. And I believe a lot of times as small business owners, um, we tend to do a lot of the labor ourselves and we're, we're working it and we are hustlers. We will make it happen. We will scale it. We will pivot. We will do whatever needs to be done to make it work. Um, I think one of the challenges that we face in that is how do we reinvent ourselves? And so my business, it grew. So I'm a diversity and consulting firm, diversity and inclusion equity firm. And I don't have to tell you women, all that happened over the past year, there was a boom for diversity consultants. Um, so much so, so within the first five months, I had to just stop taking contracts because I had too many. And so I, when I met with Buster Brown uh, to do the interview and he asked me a similar question, I told him one of the things that I recommend is that you prepare for growth before you actually need it. And the growth hit, I was fairly well prepared for it, but I had to hire 12 people to help me in the first year because the growth hit so heavily. And so I think that we have to always be thinking about, you know, if growth happens, if you get sick, you know, whatever the case may be, how can you make sure that the business can still function um, so that you're maximizing uh, those opportunities? Outstanding. <clears throat> One of the reasons why this particular session of Spotlight on Small Business is unique is that this is the first time that all three of my guests have won the Community Business of Lamont. Um, this started in March of 2018. The Small Business Center was invited to a coalition of five other organizations, and I gotta say them, and I gotta use my fingers, because <laughs> although I am college educated, I do forget things every day. <laughs> so the Winston-Salem Urban League, the NAACP of Winston-Salem, or the branch, NAACP branch of Winston Salem, the Triad Minority and Women's Business Expo, the Winston Salem Black Chamber of Commerce, and just like that, I forgot who the fifth is. Let me get it. Let me get. It, let me get it. And the, did I say the Winston Salem Black Chamber of Commerce? Yeah. Is it the Small uh, Business Center? <laughs> well, we're we're the sixth one, so I was trying to count the other five. Access. No. Nope. Um, Winston Salem Chronicle. Hustle. Yes, thank you. Yes, it was um, Winston Chronic. Okay, there's so many. Look, look, Chris is hey, just going down a list of other organizations that can really help to support small businesses. But it's, it's these six organizations came together, and well, actually, we were invited to the party after the fact. So whatever number of organizations started, they said, you know what? There are some really good small businesses out there. More people need to know about. It. We wish we had all the capital that Shalisha was talking about, but but we don't. But what we have is a voice. But that is capital. That's right. That's right. A different kind. It's not financial capital, but it is definitely capital. Mm -hmm. And with our voice, we're going to make sure that other people know about them. So mm -hmm. if anybody receives the newsletter from the Small Business Center, it will list everyone who's ever won, everyone who's ever been recognized as a community business of the month. Mm -hmm. If you receive the newsletter or go to the website for the Urban League, for the NAACP, for the Winston Black Chamber of Commerce, et cetera, you, they, so in some way, they're recognizing you because once you've won, you're carrying a banner mm. saying that you can be recognized too. Because there's a lot of small businesses that are out there that have never nominated themselves. Yes. And some of it is because they're probably intimidated because when they listen to you all, they're like, well, if they won, I could, I could never win. Mm -hmm. But they need to be encouraged. 
right. that yes, you can be recognized as the community business of the month. Right. And so we so encourage more people to to nominate others or to nominate themselves for this. Mm -hmm. So, Krishana, before before Kristen and Shalisha joined us, you talked a little bit about Buster Brown. All of you, I think, were interviewed by Buster Brown. Is, is that is that true, Kristen? Okay. So, mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned the Chronicle. How can I forget the Chronicle? Mm -hmm. We actually, when we met in person, we met at the Chronicle. So shame on me for forgetting the Chronicle. I love the Chronicle. I'm a subscriber of the Chronicle. And I'm glad that this is something that they said is important to us. The Chronicle isn't necessarily known for, for su supporting and providing resources to small businesses. But when you look at it, what is it? It's a community newspaper. Who's in the community? People. Who, what do people do? They shop. <laughs> they engage in services. So they need to know about the small businesses. And I can give a definition of why each of these six organizations cares about your success. Mm -hmm. So now that I, I gave that commercial, let me just ask you, I, I know not every time you have a customer are you able to say, how did you find out about me? But do you have a sense that some of them found out about you because you were recognized as the community business of the month? Yes. Um, For sure. Mm -hmm. Especially senior clientele. Say African American senior clientele. I was first recognized January 2019, and they still remember me from that. Um, but I think the opposite of me, because I'm a solopreneur and I pivoted my business and I was going so much, I haven't really done a lot of Facebook or Instagram um, posts like I normally do. But what's surprising is I'm still getting clientele that's word of mouth, um, still getting recognized. So those those features do matter because um, people still like people will come to me still with the newspaper and say, oh, you're the girl in the newspaper. And I'm, you know, I've been saving this in case I needed you and I'm glad now I'm coming to you. So it does matter. So at the time they didn't have a cracked screen or some need for computer repair, right. but eventually yes. they did. Mm -hmm. And so that's how marketing works sometimes. You, you market and you don't see the return right away. Exactly. But the example that you gave is, it may be two years later, mm -hmm. and, and and no telling who many, how many people were sent your way, because somebody saw you. They might not even remember where they saw you. Exactly. But they just remember the name, Geek in Heels or mm -hmm. Shalisha Moore. Mm -hmm. Cool. Was there anything that either of you wanted to add, Kristen or Krishana? <clears throat> I can't, I was just recognized last month. <laughs> so it's I haven't funny. had enough space uh, yet. Yeah, it's, funny, it's funny saying last month, like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> However, I will say, you know, I do a lot on social media and I blasted out the, the recognition and the article and the response was overwhelming. Like there were so many comments to that recognition. So I know that people know about it. We'll see where it goes. I'm sure it will be nothing but positive. Outstanding. Kristen, were you going to add something? Um, no, okay. just, just <laughs> no. Well, let me start with you for the for our last question, or not question, but, but request. And that is, I want you to say whatever you want everybody to know who's watching. Just one, one last thing about you, and then we're going we're gonna to sign off. I try to make these about 45 minutes or less. <sighs> So like something about me or my business, like your business or you, <laughs> if you feel like just talking, if you want to just let everybody know your business, you know, what's your favorite <laughs> color and what's your favorite music? <laughs> no, I just did it. Whatever you want to share. Um, well, all June long, we're having uh $5 shipping this month. Um, so that's, that's something new. We're trying to do like a new special each month. So that's the new, that's the June special. Wow. That's good. Yep. yep. You can find us on the web at productsbylizzy.com. And like I said, if you're local, you can come like, you can check the pickup option. You don't have to pay for shipping at all. Awesome. June specials all month long. I mentioned in a commercial that I did earlier that June is, is my favorite month. Now there's another reason why it's my favorite okay. month. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, we'll be having some Father's Day, uh, Father's Day specials pretty soon too. That's another reason. <laughs> <laughs> June's a great month. <laughs> By the way, my first child was also born in June. So, you know, there's just, uh -huh. there's a bunch of reasons why I love June. Mm. All right, Krishana. 
Yes. Um, so I'll actually close out with the voice of one of my clients. Most of my business comes from word of mouth. Uh, we are a full service firm. We offer not just diversity training, but assessments. We can help you with job postings, with content. We're absolutely a full service for, firm at Heinz Gaither Consulting. But I'll just close with one of my clients. Uh, we work for three months with Kaplan Early Learning Company, um, who's the largest supplier of early childhood products in the United States. And um, Kaplan said, Heinz Gaither Consulting has changed my life personally. This is the vice president there. And her organization changed our business, which will impact the communities that we serve. Thank you, Dr. Heinz Gaither. We look forward to working with you again. So I've just let my client's voice speak for itself. Outstanding. Outstanding. And, and what you said, I'll just throw this in here. What you said about word of mouth, that's true for most small businesses. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shalisha? To piggyback off her last comment and yours about word of mouth, I was just recently um, awarded with Triad's number one computer and IT business, yeah. the Triad. And, and did, you, did you see that I happened to promote that? Yes. <laughs> I'm in yes. I can't comment right now. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. But um, when I received the email last month from Yes Weekly, that I'd won, I didn't even nominate myself and I didn't even know. So that blew me away. And I kind of makes me want to cry because, you know, my business means so much to me. And for people like people will go, I'll go on Facebook right now. And someone's like, Hey, who does X, Y, Z? And they'll geek and heels. And there'll be 10 other people. And then of course, it'll be other people tagging other businesses, but then someone's like, okay, well, I want to go to Geek and Heels. And when my clients meet me for the first time, like, oh, I couldn't wait to meet you. Everyone, you know, refer me to you. So that means just so much to me that people refer me and constantly refer me. That means so much for me to be able to sustain and grow and eventually expand my business. So um, I know that I'm a success story. Like anything that could have happened to me with not being from here, um, I'm just grateful that I just made those connections and being able firstly to go to the small business center and have those meetings with my mentors to get the courage to step out. And like anyone who knows Alan, like Venture Cafe, I'd be like, Alan, yeah. you know, Alan would, okay, let's go over here and talk and, you know, walk me through it. So mentors are just People just don't understand a business mentor is everything. And I'm so grateful for Alan, for James Perry of the Urban League, because he's who put me in Haynes Mall. This was his idea. And I can say at first when he said, you know, a kiosk in the mall, and I was still working in corporate, I was like, <laughs> I am too fancy to be anybody's mall. But then <laughs> fast forward to a year when I quit corporate and I said, okay, I, I want to do Geek and Heels. And he was like, well, what do you think about being in the mall? And I was like, you know what? that's a good idea. And that just all goes back to mentorship and having people around you have a vision because sometimes you can't, you can't see things. And it's, you have to have those people around you who can see those things for you and can pour into you because that means so much. So I'm thankful for the community of Winston-Salem because, because of this community, we're able to all thrive. Right. Very well said. And we are committed to making sure that we as a community do continue to advance. It's not just one or two businesses that, that matter. All of us matter. Exactly. And what you said about mentorship, um, the website for the Small Business Center is on the screen. I'm, I'm pointing to it right here. And all you have to do is go to that website 24 seven, 365. And you'll see a, there's a big green button that says counseling and mentoring. Click on that mentoring, that button rather. It'll show you the list of our 27 mentors, when they're available, when they're, what their specialties are. And if you say, I need help with that, you can just click on a button and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And if they're not available, choose somebody else because there's always somebody who can help you because there's a lot of help that we need. It's not just one or two things. There's a lot of help that we need. So we're here to support you. All that is paid for by your tax dollars to so take full advantage of it. There's no reason for anybody to, to go it alone, right? We should all have people around us, just like Shalisha said. So thank you, ladies, for being outstanding, not just during this last 45 minutes or so that we've been together, but all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, you mentioned James Perry. There's not a week that goes by that I don't reach out to James or Shalisha or Krishana or Kristen or somebody else 
because they're doing great things. And also I need them to help me to do great things. So we're all in this together. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for those of us who joined us live. Thanks, thanks to those of us, those of you who are watching us on video.